lot. There we go, we're live. Hi everybody, it's Jackie from The Paint Bar and today I'm here with my Aunt Susie and we kind of look alike when we're side by side like this, Aunt Susie. So um, for those who don't know, you guys have, we've done lives with my grandmother before and this is my grandmother's youngest daughter. So there are four kids and this is uh, Nancy's daughter. There are four kids. My dad is the only boy with these three other girls. So there's Ellen, then my dad, then Bootsy, and then Susie. So um, Susie has also worked at the paint bar, which we forgot just now when we were talking about that. Yes, yes. Uh, and some of you might actually know her and remember her from when you were, many of these, many of these member Sues are former customers, but the majority. So I was um, Aunt Susie, um, <laughs> usually the bartender. Yeah. And I did teach and I did do some of the designs, actually, a lot of the owls and a lot of the kids' designs. Yes, Susie is like the best when it comes to, um, I've been actually, I've been writing your name Susan everywhere. Do you want to go by Susie or Susan for this? You can call me Susie. <laughs> or actually, you always call me Suze. I do call you Suze, Aunt Suze, true. Yeah. <laughs> you can call me Suze. Um, oh, what well, I meant to ask you, well, um, yes. I, I remember what I was going to ask you before and I'll ask you when the time comes. So I see okay. some people are popping on right now. Um, as you join us, make sure you say hello because it's always fun for us to know who's here watching and we won't call you out for anything. We just want to say hi. And I'm just going to refresh on Facebook because I can see things a little easier because I'm on my phone and Facebook. So let me just do that really quickly. All right. So Suze, what we're going to do. Oh yeah. So what we're going to do now, so Susie's actually at her daughter's dorm room. So you are, she went to visit her this weekend, which is so cool. Um, we have a lot of artists in our family. So her daughter is also an amazing artist, I should say. And um, so Susie, let's talk about you and your career, your path into being an artist. And do you feel like you were just like born into this family of artists? Do you feel like you found your own path as an artist? Do you feel like, I don't know. Oh, while you talk, I'm going to go grab your birch trees. They're up here in the studio. Oh. <laughs> so should I just talk? Yeah. So tell us about your background. Okay. Um, well, growing up in the family that I did with my mother as a sculptor, I always had art all around me and it was just a natural extension of who I was. I never really thought about it. I didn't question it. It wasn't a big deal to me at all to have a mother who was an artist. So I just always felt very comfortable doing any kind of art. And I didn't necessarily think of it as a, as a career. I just thought of it as part of who I was. So um, it wasn't until later, I think, as I got a little bit older. Um, but I was never afraid of it. That was something. And I always felt very supported in every kind of art endeavor that I wanted to do. It was never something that I was intimidated by or felt that it was um, not acceptable. So it's always something very welcomed in my life for me to, you know, attempt. I would actually say I felt the exact same way. Like it never, art was just a normal part of my life. Right. Like extra layer. I had like nanny and then I had you all, like I had, everyone was doing art and it was just yeah. what we do. Yeah. I had friends, friends would come over and I'd say, do you want to play with clay? And I thought that was just a normal thing. And we go down in the basement and my mom had a great big, uh, aluminum trash can filled with clay because she would teach sculptor, sculpture class in our basement and we just play with clay or we'd go upstairs and I remember this I don't you probably wouldn't even know this Jackie because by the time you were grown up my mom had a different studio but she used to have the original studio in where her office is now in the house and so I used to like we the, my friends would come upstairs and then we would dip our fingers in the molten wax that she had heated with a lamp so that she could work in wax and it would be liquid wax and we'd like dip our fingers in to make like little um you know fingerprints yeah and that was something else that was just like part normal for me part of my life That's yeah good. so some weird like kids probably never even saw that wax could be used for something artistic sculpture and it was brown so that was unusual and the fact that you could just have you know all these armatures set up in your basement and big you know huge trash cans filled with clay that was just normal to me right so um okay so then you went on in high school and college and you just did at the what did you start to realize things were a little bit different like you had an extra a natural talent or it was i don't know do you think it's talent well, it was when I thought about career, I guess I thought for sure the one thing that I knew was that I loved art. And people would say at that time would ask me, do you want to be an artist like your mother? And I said, um, 
no, I want to be an artist like my mother, but not that kind of artist. So yeah. I didn't want to be a fine artist because um, I went to college starting in 1980 and I really wanted to be able to support myself and have an independent life where I was in my own apartment and I was kind of uh, um, just able to have a life that I didn't have to worry about going to bring slides to a uh, you know, a gallery and um, very different life. So I thought, okay, commercial art is the direction I want to go. And I want to have a job. I want a salary. I want some way to be really independent and know that I could depend upon that uh, yeah. every week. Right. I actually wanted to do commercial too. And I think it, I didn't want to be a fine artist where my sister Mia always did. Exactly. Right. Right. And, and why did you decide you wanted to be commercial? Like what sort of drew you to that? Uh, I think I liked it more. Honestly, I think it's, I don't know, for me personally, it was because my parents were divorced and I wanted to also just be, have a, like, know I could make money. I don't yeah. know, a little bit of that. Like I, at, I remember at 17 being like, I never want to rely on anybody. And I know, I know how hard it is to be a fine artist. And now it was like a whole different time to be a fine artist. And that we can right. have that conversation. But um, yeah, yeah. I also think I just was like drawn to a more commercial world. Like I didn't want to just yeah. be and like, I, I like the business part of it, which is, mm -hmm. um, you know, like our family, to be honest, was pretty um, not into the paint bar. Like Nanny and me, mm -hmm. did not understand the idea of. But Susie, you were always on board, so you and I must, yeah, have a similar mindset when it comes to art. Yeah, I I also do think there's something really satisfying. I liked the idea of having um, a, a problem and then finding a solution for it. Even if it's somebody says, I want a certain kind of design, I want a plaid or I want a floral or I want, but I want this kind of floral. I want a contemporary floral. I want a traditional. And the idea of being, being able to actually satisfy that customer, that's something I learned later that yeah. is um, for me uh, very satisfying. You yeah. know, it, it's like someone has a desire and you're able to fulfill that desire and it makes them happy and you get paid for it. Right. And sure. it's kind of like for the paint bar, I remember just feeling so, even as the bartender, like on a very, very superficial level, I guess, being able to say, you know, somebody wanted a glass of wine and I could serve it and they would be so happy. Like, thank you so much for this. And I know what that's like when you order a cup of coffee and somebody gives it to you and they're very grateful and you feel like, oh, that, you know, that must be like a love language. I don't know, something yeah. that I have. Well, I don't know. Have a lot of love for sure <laughs> <laughs> but i think that was very attractive to me to be able to um find solutions for situations right no and i think that's a big that's a big part of being an artist yeah yeah i'm um so i want to talk about what you're doing now well first let's talk about what you did at polar tech yeah so so i actually i i studied um i just to can i just say this one thing about like what i went into in, in terms of my school yeah so i i sort of stayed with um, academics for the first four years, but took all my um, electives in art. And that's where I learned about, and, and Nanny and I actually had a conversation about um, everything being designed. And this was before I went to college and she was lying in bed one night and we had this conversation. I was sitting next to her and we were talking and she just started looking at things saying, oh, look, you know, someone has to design this container and somebody has to design this cup and somebody has to design the Kleenex box or the sheets that I'm sleeping in. So then that's kind of where my mind started to realize, oh, as a commercial artist, there's so many options, right? you know? And for instance, Jackie, you went into photography and that seemed like an option that I was aware of, but all these other options I was not aware of. So that was something I learned became um, at, when I went to um, Syracuse undergrad, that's where I learned about something called surface pattern design. And I took a lot of electives there. And that's where they talked about like all different kinds of surfaces that need design. And it could be furniture design, it could be industrial design, or it could be textile design or any kind of surface pattern design, you know, China, um, all sorts of stuff. So then I afterwards, um, I then went on to grad school and studied at FIT and that's where I studied textile design. And, um, and then once I left there, I hand painted on silk for a year down on A Street, hand painted on, that's when you were just a baby and um, hand painted on silk got paid by the piece. But that's where I also, that was 
in the mid 80s, like 85, 86. And that's when hand painting on clothing, like down in Faneuil Hall. I could see your mother could have been one of those people because there was a woman who started in a little cart Mm-hmm. with hand-painted cotton clothing. She yeah. had artists who did it. And then that's where she, you know, turned it into a bigger business. I started working for her. Hi. Oop. There you are. Okay. <laughs> um, and then it was after that that I started getting into, I said, okay, I did that for a year. And then I decided I'd go off on my own. And that's where I started my own hand-painted clothing for children's business. Gotcha. And that's where I started all this. I always forget about the silk part of it. Yeah, that's how it it first started, but then I decided in order to do it myself, I wanted to just do children's clothing. And that's when like you were born and Mia was born and all my siblings were having kids. And your mom was extremely instrumental in making um, my business successful. Cause she actually, I think she was probably the one who came up with the idea of almost having um, like a Tupperware party, but a party for all of her friends who are having babies. Oh. And she would invite them all and, you know, we'd have snacks and wine or something. And then I would show all of my different designs and I would take custom orders. I didn't realize that she had a part in that. Yes, she was huge in making that happen. And I think that was her idea of having these home parties. And then I would send out postcards, you know, every month, like if there was a holiday or something coming up or a new design to sort of, I mean, your mom is such a great marketer and she was, that was really her field at that time. I think she was in marketing and communication. Mm -hmm. And so she was helping me to do that. Gotcha. And drive my own business. Amazing. Yeah. Tupperware party. I do remember her always talking about Tupperware parties, which are- it's, it's <laughs> great. I mean, people do it now all the time for everything, but there were very few of them. It was kind of like there were these pyramid scheme things. And then there was like Tupperware and there was, um, you know, that makeup company. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but anyhow. Um, okay. So I remember you doing these a ton when I was younger. You made us nightgowns. I mean, we still, I wish I had it with me, but I know we still have a nightgown that you made. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, and I think my mom saved our onesies for a very long time. So what about, so you went down a totally different course for a long time because I don't really remember you doing too much fabric painting until. Yeah, I did that for a year. And then I realized you have to wear a lot of hats and there was no such thing as, you know, the internet or, you know, Instagram or any computer generated anything. Mm-hmm. So in order, I basically had fallen in some ways into the same situation that I said I didn't want to be in because in order to sell anything beyond these individual, you know, pieces, I actually had to go door to door, kind of like going to a gallery and I'd go to a retail store, I'd find them in the phone book and I'd go to the retail store and I'd say, you know, these are the things that I do. Are you interested in carrying them in your store? And so I did actually get a lot of people who were interested and I did do a lot. Every single one was hand painted, hand done. Um, And I loved doing it, but I didn't like wearing all the hats. Like if I could have had someone else who marketed, that would have been great. So I did it, the whole thing um, I did for about a year. And then I decided I wanted something even more reliable. Mm -hmm. So I ended up um, going. And back then I went back to New York, talked to this one woman who everybody knew was a great headhunter. And she sent me back to my ideal job at the time. I really want to work for this company. Um, and that's where I started wall covering up in Salem, New Hampshire. So I did that for about four and a half years. And I was designing wall covering um, for residential design, which I loved, absolutely loved. Um, You've had a lot of different hats. I don't even know about some of these jobs. Yeah, that one was great. I had, I mean, back then again, I mean, I don't know how old most of your audience is, but back then again, nothing was done on the computer. It was all hand done. I had to do separations all by hand. I had this huge um, light table that I used for everything. You know, I'd sketch out my design and then in order to transfer the design onto layers of acetate, um, I had to use the light table. And your mom knew a lot about this, like Ruby Lith using opaque layers Mm -hmm. in order to block things out. A lot of working. I didn't really work in color. I really worked in color placement. So it was all basically black and white um, with color placement because I was making the separations. 
So it's a, it's a little bit more complicated to talk about, but it has to do with the printing method. And I got to be the artist, but I also got to be um, sort of the technician mm -hmm. and determine where um, color placement went. Yeah. And, um, and then beyond that, it was out of my control. So I didn't work in color, but it was great for my hand to really, I, I got very comfortable drawing. Mm -hmm. And I think that was extremely helpful. Like that was a great education in just learning how to draw. Everything was hand done. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So then what happened? Then you. <laughs> then I got tired of, of working in black and white and I decided I wanted to work in color. Gotcha. So, you know, it's so funny because like this was my ideal job. I was in heaven mm -hmm. and, um, it was just great. And then, you know, time went on and almost five years later, I realized, you know, I'm ready for something beyond this. So I actually um, applied to work at Malden Mills, which is in Lawrence, Massachusetts. And at the time they had a department in upholstery fabric. Mm -hmm. And again, everything was hand painted. And um, I got that job. And I actually, I think I applied this the third time I got it. So I was applying over probably a year yeah. and um, I finally got the job and then I was hand painting and we started at the time to implement um, a computer program. And that was probably in the early nineties. So yeah. that was the beginning of a very different world. I'm totally. And I remember you, I remember what, like looking at people's fleeces and I don't know if you made it or not, but I was at the age where I was like, my aunt made that. My aunt made that. <laughs> well, if it came if it came from LL Bean, I probably did. So I worked in the upholstery department, but in 1995, um, Malden Mills had a terrible fire, and that upholstery department um, pretty much went away. Um, that's where the fire occurred, and the transition into mostly apparel fleece fabric happened. Mm -hmm. So once that happened, I was very fortunate to be able to transition seamlessly into that department because it was growing and I was, um, I had already um, initiated interest into it. We all ended up going there, but I was very fortunate to get in there right away. And um, that was a wonderful experience. Also, we had all become um, conversant in this uh, particular computer language that was not like, you know, Apple Mac related or anything like that. It was, it was something private prior uh proprietary <laughs> proprietary and the thing that was really cool about it was it we had two screens so we had one screen and then another screen so you could work locally like on a design but then you could work what we call globally where you turn that design into patterns so that was something i was always interested in is pattern design so i've always that's usually in every like job that i've had working for any company it's always been related to pattern design but I was very fortunate. I got the account of L.L. Bean. And so I did all the fleece designs for children's uh, apparel, men's apparel, women's apparel. And they were doing decorative fabric apparel and like home mm -hmm. residential. Um, and it was wonderful because their uh, product managers would come and actually sit next to me at my computer. And I would get to just design right there in front of them. And it was so exciting. And I'd have it's I don't know how many listeners know about like a stylus, like a pen and a tablet that you can draw on. So I was able to draw right in front of them and they would bring different resources. I remember this one woman who was a, um, a women's uh, apparel product manager, and she one time brought me a whole bunch of silver dollars and said, I want to do something with silver dollars. And so um, it was just, that was a great experience. And I loved, again, that went back to the idea of working with a customer and having, you know, a desire to, you know, fulfill a need. And um, that was extremely gratifying for me. That also is totally scary idea of you having to do something on demand for, for like, that's a real, you yeah. must you must have some real talent. That's really well. I don't. I think that you know it was a beginning. It was a lot of times it was brainstorming, right? You know. So it, it, the other thing I must say is that the process of doing this kind of fabric design was a lot slower than the kind of process that we're in now. This is like how many years later? 20, 30 years later. Mm -hmm. um, and things are much faster now. So that back then, I think there was a lot more flexibility in terms of doing a, 
you know, a, a brainstorming session and then saying, okay, we have some stuff to work with. I'll send you some things, but I had time, you know, whereas now if a customer sat with me, you know, their deadline may be very different because they're man. Oh, the other thing is we manufactured on site. So as opposed to like sending it off to China and, you know, or India or Mexico or wherever. So um, it was different, you know, it's a different time and a very different pace. Yeah. Plus, Polar Tech is also, um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. It's a very fuzzy fabric and you can only get a certain amount of detail as mm -hmm. opposed to, I actually wanted to show, I think I'm leaning the wrong way. I did happen to bring this to bring to my daughter. This is something I just am doing now that's, can I show this? Yeah, of course. It's a, um, it's a wrapping paper. That's what I'm doing now. And um like that is designed i handed that design on photoshop on a computer and i don't know if you can see zoom in on that at all but it's um it's very detailed and when you're working in something like polar fleece you know that kind of product can't get detail like that at all so the designs were a lot more simple back then and when you're designing on paper you can get and same with wall covering my wall covering designs were much more sophisticated you know, than the Polar Tech designs. Right. Just based on the product itself, the surface. Do you make that one in back or you just, or that was someone else? No, I did make that one. Is it drawn, is it drawn or is it photographed? Um, it's a printout and it, I it originally like made it on the computer with Photoshop, but I did each of the Christmas bulbs. Yeah. Oh, cool. On the computer, but I used a lot of a lot of textures that I made, and you know mm -hmm. I don't know, but you can see sort of the um, wall covering influence. There's like a damask behind it. Yeah, I don't know how much. I don't think I can zoom in at all, but I, I think know. that's as close as I maybe actually. Let me undo the. Let me see if I can go closer. I, I know there's a way. I'm doing this on my phone, and I know that I can make you the main screen, but because it's on my no, phone, that's okay. I, I I'm sort of zooming like. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's go back to because I think so a lot of these people here would love to learn more about fabric painting. And so yes. for your job now, you're still drawing and you're still making it. I mean, I saved some of your I've, like, I, I want to frame it. So I saved your something you got for Charlie. You gave him it was like an elephant or something. on, it. <laughs> And I saved it. It's so beautiful. And I want to frame it in his room. But you I mean, you you do everything. She also, I brought this up. This, these are birch trees that I actually purchased from you because I love them so you much. Did. You um, did. Oh, but the, she's this molding stuff that makes the trees real almost. They have texture. So you have all these, like, what's your pat? What do you love doing now? You do your job because you have to make money, but you're not wanting to like, what's your passion now? And then that's a really good question. You're back to your, you're back to where you kind of started. Not I know it's funny. You know what? I feel like I, I wouldn't even say it's like this. I'd say it's like this, you know, and in some way like that, when I did those birch trees, that was about 10 years ago. And I was considering going into fine art at that point. Um, and then some circumstances changed and then I realized I wanted to actually um, have a full-time job. So I would say right now, my passion is doing something for, um, myself uh maybe in an in, in between not quite fine art but not quite work where you go to an office um but i am really excited about just sort of doing things again with my hand i had done um i don't know if, i don't think you even saw it but i did some signs um and a big mural two piece like a diptych mural in a um, mexican food restaurant <laughs> Those are very cool. I yeah. Think. So stuff like that. I mean, anything that comes up, I'm just, I would love to do sort of whatever comes up. I'm, I'm excited to just not do everything on the computer at this point. Anything that I can do, you know, with my own hands, I think is sort of where I am right at this moment. So how did you get back into painting onesies again? Is it because everyone is having babies? That you yes. Yes. It was, that was it. I love, I think you're the same way and probably me too. It's like you, yeah. you, if you have to do something, then you do it. Right. So it sort of pushes you to get there. So what I mean by that is there are, so there, my grandma has four children and then now, and then there were 11 grandchildren and now there are six great grandchildren. So, yeah. and then three of those, like 50% of those great grandchildren were all born this year. Right. So, 
Izzy's just started, she's kind of experimenting. I think I, with Sienna is really where you started experimenting. And now, yes. I mean, I can see even what you're doing now versus what you did a few years ago. So, okay, yeah. let's talk about fabric paintings. I know that's what a lot of these people want to hear too. So okay. tell us about, um, so let's go into like a little, some details. Okay, so I posted a picture of Sienna and I didn't, not everybody saw it, but I posted it on our membership page. And she has, I love these onesies. She's little and she's lasting for a very long time in them, but some of them are hand painted and some of them are done with Sharpie. And so maybe you can talk a little bit about what mater materials and what's working. Yeah. All right. Well, basically, I mean, I just buy stuff. Well, first of all, can we qualify that everything I say is just my own experience and I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. So I don't want anybody to like take this as the gospel. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is just what I've done and I haven't done any real research into it. And as Jackie can attest, um, I did do a few for Sienna and I got really excited because I went to Staples and I found this wonderful set of Sharpies in every color you could imagine. And I thought, oh, great, I can do really wonderful detail with Sharpies, because um, usually what I used to do was just do um I would buy textile paint, which you can buy anywhere. Was this at the time? It was a special kind of paint. Um, I don't even know if you can use, find it now, but um, I then would outline it in just black sharpie, and it seemed to last really well. I also heat set it with an iron. However, I can't be bothered with that now, and I think there are so many more options um, with paint. And one of the things that I did find using all these different colored sharpies, Jackie mentioned that when she put them in the laundry, all the colors, uh, except for the black, I think, mm -hmm. ran. So she said they don't look terrible. Do you have those? Uh, so, okay. So Susie and I are very similar, the non-type A personality. And I put them all into a bag because I knew we were going to be going live and I didn't know what, and I don't know where the bag is. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said Drew found them. No, he found my computer. <laughs> oh. Oh, I thought he found the bag. Okay. Anyhow, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. I will, put you on the spot. I'll find them and then I'll post them on our Facebook page. Okay. Anyhow, anyhow. So it turns out that the they're, Sharpies that were colored. It's kind of like, what? they're very pretty. Like you, it's not like they ran, they just bled. So they like, bled really straight line it's like the, like it's the most saturated in the middle and then it yes. down and so it's it's not not it's very pretty still so I wouldn't say it's a fail yeah. and actually I might if I I'd love to see that because in fact that might be a really cool technique so if you were putting right. let, let's say make a big heart and you wanted to put stripes in the different colors it might bleed and look really beautiful right so those are the kind of things I, I am totally about. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, uh, the paints that I bought a few months ago, I think I just went into, I honestly don't have the top. And I think I just went into Michael's and I found these. And I think they're called, um, they are a kind of textile paint. And they're just, they just look like this. It says, imagine eight. I don't heat set them or anything. They came in a, like a long kind of container. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to dump them all, but um, like this. And other, like they came in a thing like this. Okay. So they just came in a long. Uh, yeah. It kind of, they look like um, pants, like, you know, the brand too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They, they do look like that. And they're very, they come in small little, but are they puppy paint or they're not puppy? Nope, paint? they're regular paint and they're kind of thick. And I think they are water based because I can, like acrylic, you can um, thin them out with water. Okay. And so I do do that a yeah. lot because they otherwise they'd be very thick and very um, opaque and kind of plasticky. One yeah. of the things I found, and I think I found doing some of the ones for Sienna was um, what I have found is the lighter and the thinner you use this paint, the easier it is to work with. And it also makes the fabric have a nicer hand to it, a nicer feel, so it's not all crunchy. Right. Um, the other thing, though, is you do have to be careful if you are watering it down because it could then bleed more. Mm. So you kind of have to find a balance of the um, correct consistency and the size, shape, that you are filling in. So if you have a really watery blob on your paintbrush and you fill a tiny little area, it may bleed out more than you want. So 
even the paint bleeds also. Yes, it will run. Yeah, yeah. Because of the fabric, because you're putting it on this fabric. If you put it on a canvas, for instance, you know, well, you know, if you have something too liquidy, it's going to drip. Right, right, right. Of course. So but it's the same. Once it dries, it doesn't bleed. So like the Sharpie markers, once they dried and then we wash them, they bled. But when you're using the paint, it doesn't, once it dries, it's, it's on there. That's correct. That's correct. And I, I do not heat set them. I don't do anything. And from what you have experienced, you've probably washed them much more than I have. All the time. Find the, the paint holds, right? Yeah, the paint is amazing. The yeah. So let's start from the beginning. So you use, this is a water base. So when you're, it's kind of like if you're taking a paint bar class, similar, you'll have like a cup of water. Yeah. Towels. What do you put in yep. between? So does okay. So, oh, and then I'll just tell you, I buy like these, um, you know, these little Gerber onesies yeah. out of the, out of the package. Can you see? Wait, can you just hold that up and everybody look at how talented, look at how cute that is. See that little, like when I think wow. about it. And you you make elephants and giraffes. I mean, you just like like Sienna's. What you made her actually is, is pretty atypical of your of your style. It was like hearts and stuff, which are so beautiful. Yeah. So, but this is the brand. I mean, I just use this, and yeah. I'm sure you could find Carter's or whatever. And this is um, it's cotton. It says it's yeah. made with organic cotton. It might actually. I'm assuming. Hold on a second. It might not even be a hundred percent cotton. Oh, it is. Yeah, no, we it is a hundred percent cotton, which is nice for babies, especially. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, and this is a, a zero to three month. Yes. Which is nice. Okay. There's so what I, what I put between the onesie and when I paint is just cardboard, which I took apart this box, anything. Yeah. And I just take this and what I do is, but before I do that, what I actually wanted to just show you my process, this is, um, it's kind of wrinkly, but I don't know if you can see this design that I made. This was actually a design I had originally made for, um, can you see it at all? Yep. Um, for my wrapping paper. And I thought, oh, I'll just take one of those elephants and simplify it. So then I, I think I took like, let's say this elephant from mm -hmm. that and sort of simplified the elephant. And then actually what I do is I, and this is what I used to do too, if I didn't have a light table is I would put this elephant inside my onesie into the place that I want to draw it um, where eventually I want to paint it. So the paper is inside of there. And then I just put it on my daughter's um, window and the light through the window made this, you know, translucent enough so that I could see the marker underneath. It's so cute. And um, then I just traced it. It's the best. And we do this for, um, I mean, we, this is a fun idea for baby showers. Like people will take, print things off online. So they might print off whatever your, your, they, they can even take, I mean, I never thought about taking wrapping paper. That's a good idea. But I, what we did for, um, baby showers in our studio and I have also been to places that do this where they print out all these little stencils you put them right these and now we do this for all of our cousins too it's so fun to yes make. you hand do it so you're doing it your next next level there Suze well so, continue well the only the only reason I used this wrapping paper was just as my inspiration for an elephant so it's really more for inspiration and it, and for me I had to just simplify it because again, you can't get as much detail on this kind of fabric as you could get on, um, you know, a paper. So then what I did was I put the cardboard, my piece of cardboard right inside. And that will just prevent the paint from running from the front of the onesie to the back. So that's just the barrier. I'm only using that. And if you want to get a nice big piece, so it really becomes taut, which makes it even easier. Or mm -hmm. you can like tape it mm -hmm. so that it can be tighter. Yep. And then that makes it easier to paint. That's a lot easier for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's helpful. And then how long do you, does it have to dry before it's the actual paint? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really depends on how thick you do it. I actually did mix up a little paint. I'm just going to show you what, like, again, I'm kind of one, I'm old school and two, I'm very resourceful. So this was like some kind of a Chinese takeout thing. And I use it all the time. The paint dries. And even though it is, you know, um, water-based, once it dries, it's like acrylic. 
So it will never run again. It's going to harden on there. So I use the same. This is like my art palette. Right. So I just put dabs of paint. There is some liquid paint on there. Yep. So you, but you did Sharpie first, right? So you, you have Sharpie. Yes. You do and so, Sharpie first. So in this case, I did do Sharpie first, but there are going to be, um, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to use Sharpie at all. I was going to do a few little hearts showing you that I don't do Sharpie at all. Mm -hmm. I was just going to apply just a little bit of the gray to just show you yeah. what it looks like. If I turn this down, will that work? Can you see yeah. if I, let's yeah. see. No, that won't work. Can you see it? No, nope. go down more. Uh, up more. We were just kind of seeing your pants before. Can you see that now? Towards you. There you go. And yeah, pull it towards can you. Can you see that? We can. Yeah, move it to your left a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Okay, I'll try this a little bit. Okay. See what happens. Um, and I just, what I'm doing is I just mixed a little bit of the black and some white paint. It's very much like paint bar style. And I'm just, and I actually am doing it just very lightly. Wait, will you move it to the right a little tiny bit? Like we see the flowers. There you go. Perfect. Can you see? Yeah, and then back towards yourself a little more. There, that's exactly right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. So I'm just painting lightly. I decided, okay, I'll do a little bit of the ear. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very light. These are also just really old brushes that I happen to have. Again, you want to wash them, though, because they will um, get hard. And then you won't be able to use them anymore. So I'm just painting inside this Sharpie line. If you go over it, you can always go back over the Sharpie once the paint is dry. So if you want to accentuate it, I, you know, I did these lines very lightly, mm -hmm. but if you want to accentuate it and then I just stick my brush into the water and um, let's see, I'm, maybe I should paint something else. I'll paint a little bit of this um, cheek so you can see it. I'm going to use a smaller brush for the cheek. Um, so can you see the cheek here? Yep. So I'm just painting that. And then maybe if I want to paint the elephant, the body, um, like a, a light purple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Painting it a light purple, that's not realistic. It's like, it's fun. Right, just fun. And actually, I just, I don't know if you can see where I just dabbed it purple. But yep. I can tell that that purple is going to run a lot. So I'm actually, I don't know what you can see, but I just dabbed my brush and dried it off quite a bit. So mm -hmm. now when I paint, it's not bleeding. Okay. And I'm just lightly. And, you know, all of this is very forgiving. If you, if you, if it bleeds, it just makes it look nicer and it looks more fun and handmade. Yeah. You know, there's nothing like extraordinary about any of this and it's just like the idea of even making something handmade as a gift for a baby mm -hmm. was just so that personal gift is just so special and unique and the person who receives it is going to feel so happy to know that they got a special gift that you really cared enough to you know put time into look at patty is one of our best customers here and she says i love it <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see if I can wait. Hold on, let me remove it. Okay. So wait, I was gonna ask you about the painting. Oh yeah, I will also say like for me, I I love the hand paint. I mean, we we made so many onesies, and Charlie was born in August, and he just I never put real clothes on him. But every time he wears a onesie that's made by someone I know, or even like an article of clothing, or even a blanket, like Patty made um sienna a beautiful blanket and every time i use it i want to i always want to to the point that i'm like okay they don't want to hear from me anymore but i always like to tell people when yes they wear like like susie sienna literally just rotates through i mean it's like actually shocking i can't find these onesies because i put them all in a bag and they're my favorite onesies <laughs> so she wore them all summer long and that's all she would wear them in and then some and then sabrina who's on there sabrina says hello and she said this is hi sabrina uh, but it's not the sabrina you know it's another sabrina. oh um, also a great person, but she, you know, I put little shorts. Sabrina gave us a lot of hand-me-downs, but every time I wear a hand-me-down, I want to tell Sabrina. So, you know, giving a onesie or giving clothes to a baby because it's a short period of time, there's a little window. Exactly. And people love exactly. it. 
and you yeah it just feels it feels so like such an intimate gesture you know yes so true. i'm just i mean i i also one of the things that i i have started to do this one it doesn't show it so much as maybe even use the white of the um onesie almost like a highlight mm -hmm. so i could do something that's a little less painted and more like if i left it like that you know so that i don't know if you can tell the difference but it has more white here and it's not so solid Right. You know, so you can just experiment with that. You know, one of the other things, Jackie, I was thinking about that I would love to do is like you could take you could make potato prints mm -hmm. with onesies and it would be so much fun or just take an apple and cut it in half right? and then print it. You know, any kind of printing that you do, you know, you could do it with your own children. You hand put paint on their hands and their feet. Right. And do you know, hand paint or feet paint yeah. your onesies. Yes, we did have um, apple picking bag. We would like decorate them, which actually I might go apple picking next. Yeah. Ready to come. And maybe we should make bags beforehand and that would be so fun. Yes, and I then, think that's a great idea. Susie, remember the year? That was the biggest year. We went to Honeypot Hill Orchard. Yes. Like 300 people painting yes. apple picking. I do. Forgot Do you want me to keep painting while you're talking or? Um, I don't know people. I mean, I also want to be. Are we all set? She is visiting her daughter, so we don't need to spend that much more time. I guess, are there any questions about technique? I mean, I know you can keep painting and people would love it, but we, I know you want to get back to Charlotte. So are there any um, questions that people have about materials or technique or things? You have Susie here with you. And if you miss out today and you don't ask a question today, it's fine. We can always, you can ask and I can follow up with her. But is there anything that you want people want to know? Like, um, you know, I guess, I guess when I can tell you once it's washed, it's very soft, it does not um, like ever hurt the baby or child. So that's not, I know something that might be concerned. Usually this paint is non toxic, like the acrylic paint. Also, yes. you don't need to worry about it shipping off. You don't need to worry about it going in the laundry. You don't need to worry about any of the toxicity that, you know, that just dries and it's like, it's just beautiful on there. And um, how this long is this painting without, um, having you know sharpie right so we can't really see the painting anymore we just oh can you see that i know that's a, a little better can you see that yeah but it's pretty it, it's like we just see the foot and some flowers yeah i'm painting in the flowers can you see that okay. inside the grass and there's some grass yeah that's good okay um, another the thanks for the inspiration says patty yay um so the other question i was just going to ask you is you know these are a lot of people who are some like type a personalities so yeah. for you, anyone who's doing this at home you might you know susie's just going rogue and coloring in on the onesie but my suggestion for you guys starting out is maybe if you want to down on a piece of paper and you determine, out, determine where your or you onto your actual onesie because it's not as forgiving as painting on a canvas. So you can definitely fix up mistakes and there is some, and you can speak to this too, Susie, but I would recommend like, a, if you're going to do this, go a little sketch first and then for this customer base. That absolutely. Works. Absolutely. And there's nothing, I mean, I, I still like to put a sketch together yeah. before I go directly on the fabric. Yeah, and I do too. So before I make a painting, I usually like to paint, I like to sketch it. And then sometimes I like to either write out the flowers I'm gonna do, or sometimes I need to just paint it on a small little piece of paper. Absolutely, yeah. Examples, I don't, but that's okay. All right, Susie, so now if people wanna purchase from you or follow you, so where, where's the, how do people keep in touch with you? And this well, is, you're gonna see, you're gonna, I'm gonna peer pressure you for your to make your Instagram page big again. I know, well, I think what's gonna have to happen, Jackie, yeah. <laughs> is we're going to have to figure this out. But I would love to make more of these. And I think what I would probably have to do is set up an Instagram account. And actually, Charlotte is, she just walked in and she gave me the high sign and she said she can help me with that. I know. This is, so. well, I mean, I'm not even good at our own social media. I'd way rather do other people's. Yours, your work is so Instagrammable, so sellable. I mean, we can, we can and I've also talked to Charlotte and Natalie, who are Susie's daughters, about like setting up an Etsy shop for you. There's a lot you could do. Can you see what I'm doing now? I can't tell if I'm on. Yeah, no, this is better. Before it was just like. Yeah. All <laughs> right. I think what I'll I'll do is I'll just, I'll do the sun and then I'll just show you so far what I've done. But, and then 
Um, how long does a painting usually take you? I'm sorry, what? How long does a painting usually take you? You know, it really depends. I, I um, like this doesn't take long at all, but a lot of times I'm, I'm doing a lot more detail on it these days. So it could take me a few hours. Yep. And then do you, is this something you want to keep pursuing as like a side thing or is there any, any part of you want to make this a full? Um, at the moment, I don't want to do a fall thing with it, I don't think, but I love doing it on a, as a side thing. And, and the, again, I guess this really goes back to where I started that I just love it if it is something that somebody wants and then they're really happy and they feel like I was able to give them, you know, like give them a solution for their desire, you know. And also, so I have this idea that I want to start. It's kind of funny because I want to start painting my own painting a painting business but i want to just just paint cactuses like that's all cactuses and flowers like a few flowers mm. cactuses. i did it painting for our membership and then i realized like cactuses are so cute because they all are totally different they have their unique like containers and every container can have a different color pattern like all i wanted to name for it but i'm like can i start a side hustle to my like a side paint business to my paint business it's i bet you can but the point is, I don't even really want to make money from it. I, like you, I just make painting. Yeah. It's not like the same. It's nice to have a full-time job that can kind of support your, but it makes no sense because my full-time job is painting. So um, it's. <laughs> well, maybe what you need to do is is have painting classes of cactuses. Right. I did that. So our members did get a little class of that. And that's what inspired. I was like. I oh, that's what you're saying inspired you. Okay. Yeah, I feel the most happy painting cactuses. Like I just loved it. Oh, that's that's your happy place. Isn't that weird? Yeah. They're just No, so I like that. I didn't know that though. I like that. I actually did that restaurant that I did. Here's a funny thing, like that restaurant that I I did that big diptych and the signage and everything for. Um it's a Mexican restaurant and um I was just so excited and happy that I actually made an extra painting of a cactus and said, just put this in your bathroom because I just wanted to do it because it, it was making me happy. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's something about cactuses. It, yeah, I don't know. All right, well, I know you're visiting Charlotte. Charlotte, pop in, say hello. Let's see, let's see, let's see Charlotte. Hello. Hi. So Charlotte's in college and she's like the cool cousin in college. And when- Oh my goodness. I was what I don't remember 16 when Charlotte was born and I just remember thinking about these days when you would be like cool in college and I would not be there anymore <laughs> and, here oh. we are, right? and here we are right and here we are and Patty says because we used to do flower of the month but that ended and now Patty's saying cactus of the month oh Ooh. like that thanks for the inspiration cactus of the month okay Patty you might as well talk about that after all right well um that is it Thank look at she just made this whole while we were all talking so cute I love it all right so if somebody wants to contact Susie the best thing you should do is email me so email Jackie at the paint bar oh no you can email you Susie. you can email me if oh, you yeah. want it's okay. just um it's the same last name as Jackie and then dot Susan, S-U-S-A-N at gmail.com. Okay, wait, let me see if I can put that in. S-U, no, I don't just, I'm It's S-C-H-O-N dot Susan. It's, say your email again, I'm going to type it out. It's Sharon dot Susan. Okay. At gmail.com. Okay. Explain why we, I pronounce it, and you pronounce it Sharon because that's confusing. I'm sorry, what? Sharon dot Susan at gmail. So our, you can say Sharon. I, we, yeah, we pronounce it both ways. At gmail.com. Okay, I'm about to put this up. And done. Is this going to work? It might work. Add banner. And is that okay? Yeah, I, I see it. What? Nice job, Jax. Thanks, thanks, thanks. All right, well, that's it today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. It was great to have you. And Susie, thanks for joining us. This is so fun. I know. Thank you for having me. And thank you all for listening. Yeah. I hope you found it interesting. Charlotte, you're up next. If you want to talk about what you do, we'll interview you too. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. <laughs> Anytime. Have such all a right. wonderful day. Your Sunday. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Jax.